I'm not a philosopher. Soon you will hear from Professor Rosenbaum about the deep moral issues involved in glorifying, financing, encouraging terrorism. Before we get there, I want you all to be aware that this is not just a moral issue. I want you to be aware this is actually a legal issue. And I'm just a lawyer. So what I'm going to do is what I was trained to do. I'm going to present the case to you very briefly. And I want to tell you that everything that I'm going to show you on that screen is publicly available. So don't take my word for it. Anyone who wants it, I will send it to you personally. Okay? I'm going to present to you the facts and then the evidence and then the law and then the argument. The facts here, as we say at trial, are clear and undisputed. Take a look on the screen. The Palestinian Authority has laws. These are not internal, unpublished guidelines. These are laws published and publicly available, which say that the Palestinian Authority will pay an allowance to every prisoner during their incarceration, and once they're released, they get jobs and salaries. They're exempt from paying for education, health care, and professional training. The years they spend in prison are considered years of service to the Palestinian Authority when they calculate seniority. Someone in prison for five years or more is actually entitled to a job in a Palestinian institution, and the longer he was imprisoned, which generally correlates with the more people they have killed or the more horrible the crime, the more senior rank they are given in the Palestinian government. So to be clear, by law, by undisputed, publicly available law, the Palestinian Authority lets everyone know that if they choose to commit acts of terror, they will be paid handsomely. They and their families will be taken care of for life, and far from being shunned, they will become integral parts of the government. Those are literally undisputed facts. In 2014, people started asking some questions, and so Abbas issued a presidential order that the payments would no longer be distributed by the PA's Ministry of Prisoner Affairs. Instead, they would come from the PLO Commission for Detainees and Ex-Detainee Affairs. The amendment is over here. Uh, he thought that might make it look like the money was not actually coming from the Palestinian Authority government. And yet, guess what? It's still literally in the Palestinian Authority's budget, and I will show you that budget momentarily, where it openly just transfers the money from the PA to the PLO for the physical disbursement. The office that disperses the money is literally the same office. The official who disperses the money is literally the same official. And the PA officials have openly admitted that the PA remains the financier and the decision maker in all things pertaining to this disbursement. Okay, you might think, well, maybe they only spend a trivial amount on these laws. Maybe these laws are just for show. People like to say that. They don't really want to destroy Israel or pay terrorists. It's just to appeal to their base. But again, the answer is no. As Ambassador Danone said, they spend roughly 7% of their entire budget, 30% of all the foreign aid they receive on these payments. In 2016, they spent $303 million on this. And don't take my word for it. Here is their actual budget. They're not hiding these facts. You can read them for yourself. Those are the facts on the ground. Now, you've all literally seen the evidence. They're published laws and they're published budget. And you see, the reason this has been going on for so long, the reason that we as lawyers and people at the United Nations as leaders of the world uh, are, not, are not trained to see this, we're trained to look for violations in the shadows. We're trained to try and find hidden payments and look for secret meetings. It turns out that the best way to fund terrorism is in broad daylight, to publish it in your laws, openly have it in your budget because no one thinks that you could possibly have enough chutzpah to do that. No one thinks you would possibly put it out there for the world to see. No one thinks you could call yourself a partner for peace while at the same time telling the children in your community that if you decide to become a terrorist, you will make more money and be more respected than if you become a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant. Some lies are so big that we're not trained to look for them. We end up living inside them and getting lost in them, and we can't see them until we consciously take a step back, which is why it is important that we are having this event. We need to stop and call this out for what it is. This is supporting terrorism, openly, unashamedly supporting terrorism, glorifying terrorism, and doing that is a form of terrorism. 
If international law means anything, it means we simply cannot let this happen. We cannot keep pretending that the PA is a partner for peace when they literally publish their support for terrorism in our faces and dare us to say anything. And you might be thinking to yourself, wait a second, this can't be right. If it's true, then they're literally in violation of almost everything that the United Nations stands for. And, and you're correct. Aside from the specific agreements between Israel and the PA, Oslo 1 and 2, where they formally committed to combating all forms of terrorism, here are just a sample, and we don't even have time to talk about all of them, of all of the laws and conventions and treaties and norms that they are violating by doing this. And the list goes on and on and on. There's not even enough time to read the names. They're in complete and utter violation of international law. And if this body means anything, it means we have to stand up and say that this cannot, cannot keep happening. And so you've seen the facts, and I want you to remember one thing. This is not about Israel, and this is not about politics. There should not ever be two sides to this issue. Two days ago, a terrorist blew himself up at a concert and killed children in London. And we all stand with London. And if you told me that that despicable human being was now a hero and that his family was being paid for his service and honored for what he did, I would say, and I hope that you would say with me, shame on the world that allows that to happen. In this room is the mother of a child who was killed in cold blood by a terrorist. Shame on the world that allows that person to receive payment for what he did. Please don't allow this to happen. Don't allow us to live in a world where terrorism is glorified, openly, brazenly, unashamedly glorified. Today is Yom Yerushalayim, Jerusalem Day. The sages tell us that one of the meanings behind the name Jerusalem is an acronym for Ir Shel Shalom, the city of peace. In Psalms uh, 122.6, King David exhorts us, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim, Ishlayu Ohavayich, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, because when Jerusalem is in conflict, the whole world suffers. And when Jerusalem is at peace, the whole world is at peace. If you would go back to the laws that we skimmed through, you know what you would find? Terrorists who come from Jerusalem receive an extra $78. Please don't allow us to live in a world like that. At the basest of levels, peace can only happen when we stop paying people to kill other people. And so in honor of Yom Yerushalayim, the day of the city of peace, L'zecher Nishmat, in memory of Yechiel Ezra ben Ariona Ezra Schwartz, Allah HaShalom, please help us stop these payments and help us make peace happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rabbi Dr. Goldfeder.